So welcome back everybody, you join me and my grossly misshapen <laughs> middle finger uh, bashed in a couple of uh, days ago. Um, sorry about the presentation, but really um, that's what you will be seeing for the next couple of videos until my hand heals. So just a quick review, uh, revisit of, the, um, of my Lumix story. I so aptly called it. Not very original, but really I'm a huge fan of the TZ or FX series of uh, Lumix cameras. You know, the compact models, which, well, they were not really performers, but uh, exceptionally well built and they had this solid uh, Japanese made Japanese feel thing to them. They're rock solid. They're they give the impression that this uh, this really is the the best of the bunch. Well, this lineup of cameras, this brand, or uh, what have you. Uh, in all fairness, they were not that great, but they were performers in their time, and they gave early uh, smartphones around for their money in terms of uh, image quality. So really, I tried to expand this so-called collection. I started out with my original Lumix TZ7. It's the one right here, actually, this one. Sad to say this is not working properly now. So, um, <clears throat> as you can see, I can, let me just insert the battery. I have it charged up right here. T'other way around. So this thing starts right up, but really, um, <laughs> there's an issue with the diaphragm protector. It's not, it's, I think the springs are, um, <clears throat> they're uh, they are uh, moved around and they are out of place out of alignment or um, something similar so the diaphragm doesn't want to stay open um, my plan was to acquire a second TZ7 which is in okay fairly good condition and let me just show this to you so first you just uh, put the TZ7 there, uh, my original one, and this one. So I will try to show you what I'm on about. So this is the second TZ7 that I have purchased. And well, this one is working okay, I guess. Except for the fact that <laughs> the screen is broken. So my plan was to replace the screen from that one, put it in this camera and just have, you know, a functioning TZ7, a remembrance, a memento, a collector piece, whatever. Because it's much easier to open up this panel and replace the screen rather than opening this whole can of worms here. I, I, I honestly, I'm not, I'm not confident I can pull up, pull up, pull off this job of uh, cleaning or opening up the, um, the lens cover and the lens on a built-in lens camera. So let me just put this one away as well and show you my next uh, Lumix, revisit the next Lumix camera and this is, of course, my wife's old ZX-1 camera. This is really compact and uh, really a sh it was a showstopper in two th in the early 2000s. I mean, come on, look at it. It's it's so fun. It's chic. It's got this pearlescent look to it. It's made of metal, and well, although the lens uh, 
is a bit smaller and it's not such a performer in terms of image quality. It was still something like, you know, when you had those plasticky Android phones in the early uh, in the early 2010s, this was still something to behold. But anyway, if you want to check out a more in-depth view of this thing, I will put a link right here. So my last, uh, let me just put this <clears throat> camera there. And then we have my Lay last second to last purchase the TZ22. Let me just grab a battery from here so I can show you the camera working. So, on the face of things, this was supposed to be a real performer because. Um, it offered GPS connectivity directly to the satellite so you can uh, geotag your photos or whatever. Uh, in all fairness though, in reality though, this thing was far from being um, the performer everybody expected it to be and the reason is um, well compared to the TZ7 I think it did okay or to its predecessor that I believe it was the TZ10 but by the time this thing came out in 20 um, 2012 I believe or something like that phones had just taken off and Panasonic really understood the need to up their ante, up their game and they just invested heavily into Micro Four Thirds which were just on their way up and really the TZ22 was something of a, uh, an odd duckling, uh, a, you know a, a dying breed in a modern era, a dinosaur, a, it wasn't big, it wasn't impressive as its predecessors, but really it was uh, obsolete by the time it came out already. It's sort of like the Blackberry story. Anyway, there's a link to this uh, sort of revisit, review, whatever. It's one of my earliest efforts, so please excuse my my uh, wooden tongue and my huge pauses. But why am I mentioning these things? Well, I want to show you something right now. I got here a brand new TZ7. Well, brand new for me anyway. And here it is right in the box. Now, the, the story is quite fun. This thing um, cost me around 20 euros to purchase. I found it on a local site and the seller said it was in brand new condition and I was sort of skeptical at first because I have a bad experience with occasional sellers who say that things they sell are brand new but in all reality they're just marginally better than obsolete than junk or defective products. This one though gave me a great surprise. So uh, standard box full uh, of accessories. Let me just put the camera itself away for a bit while I show you things that were uh, available in the box and obviously I'm doing a bad job of this. So um, the whole suit of cables, connectors, I don't have them here because I try to keep the presentation worthwhile. There's too much clutter in this box. Even the original, um, you know, textile bag thingy that held the camera when new. There's a, a bill of sale here. Uh, 
for the total amount of 349 euros uh, with, um, you know, a certificate of warranty and uh, stamp of date. So this thing was purchased originally in 8th of April 2009, quite a long time ago. And here are the booklets and stuff that you would need for such a camera. The PC suit, the uh, <clears throat> the CD with the you know proprietary software and everything you need really. It's a whole experience. So really, paying only twenty euros for this thing was was a great deal, and I almost didn't go through with it at the time because. I thought spending some uh, such an, a negligible amount, but still something um, out of my uh, personal budget on another Lumix camera. Yet again, I said to myself, well, listen, this is getting out of hand. But really, after reconsidering it, I went back and forth with the seller. Um, he was a great guy. Uh, great sport for <laughs> waiting for me to decide on uh, on such a, uh, a small amount of 20 euros so here it is the camera itself is for all intents and purposes brand new i mean uh, of course it's not new new it's not brand new but it's mint uh, there's minimal wear on the screen there's also just the smallest hint of a ding here. You can see it as being more profound because of the lighting on my studio. But really, in everyday usage, you cannot really fold this camera. And I will explain to you why. Because if you compare it to my other <laughs> TZ7s, well, you can see right here that these are... Well, they're pretty worn, pretty well used. Um, put them side by side and you can see that this one, my latest purchase is quite, um, quite the showstopper. So really I was uh, blown away by the quality of this camera. Let me just take a quick photo. And I was blown away by this camera, by the shape it was in. So I decided to bite the bullet as they say and just go ahead and purchase it. Let me just show you some qualities of the picture. Well, clear, clear-ish image. Not that great, but then again, it's 2009 and mid 2000s technology. So there you have it. So as a small conclusion to this series, I do plan to stop uh, <laughs> hoarding and collecting Lumix cameras. This latest purchase has uh, really um, quench my thirst for for such devices i also think i'm going to plan i'm going to try and give away some of these cameras as soon as i make a functioning one out of the two defective ones uh, stick around for that as i try to gather more subscribers and uh, content and uh, viewing hours and if you think my efforts are worthwhile and you want to um, prolong my agony, I ask you to um, subscribe, watch and to, um, you know, to advise other peoples to recommend my channel. Because then I will feel um, motivated and empowered to continue on my endeavor of collecting, hoarding and while buying useless, obsolete tech stuff like these ones, so you don't have to. Uh, thanks for watching, and I guess I shall see you in the next one. Bye-bye.